welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk mm-hmm. about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, basically anything that we just kind of find interesting, because we're going to talk about it. It's our show. Deal with it. Ha ha. Warning, there will be <laughs> laughter. I know, right? <laughs> Might yeah. not be able to go to sleep to this one. Um, Vince Stone, that's Joel Bryant, and over there is Pedro Mateus. We get everybody here. live, watching <laughs> us on Twitch, listening to us after the fact. What's new with everyone? We got to play the catch up game. I had a fun time. I had a fun reward for um, Sunday. I pretty much spend all day Sunday getting uh, our Saturday show out of the way mm-hmm. that we stream live. Linux uh, Gamecast Weekly. Got everything done. Fortunately, everything was done. Pushed up. I'm like, ah, what are we going to do? All the power goes up. Like, why, why the oh, power boy. go out? Oh, that, that's probably just going to be a blink. It's not going to be an issue. Then the storm that was blew by and I saw the wheelie bin go doo-dum, doo-dum, like oh no <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> that's a good one so it took it like it was the middle of the night too it came back on like maybe two o'clock but that, oh you get bored I always get interested I mean I didn't try to nuke a cup of water for tea like I did last time <laughs> I straight up went to the microwave I'm like oh right but I did try to cut on a few light switches but um Made it through it. Power came back on. Got hot. Had to go outside. Ah, summertime. That's not a good time for the AC to die. I I had those thoughts. How did people survive? Like most people don't want to keep (laughs) their area like constant, like 15, 16 degrees. But yeah, we survived that. A couple of trees fell. Nothing in my area. So Mm. I didn't have to clean up anything. And uh, yeah. Also, I got this. This is a... RE27ND, Electro Voice. That's okay, a that's why he's, you sound a little different. Yeah. <laughs> I sound like a 64K stream coming back to Jill and Pedro, but um, <laughs> it's a pretty decent microphone. Uh, it's kind of like the big brother to the RE20, and uh, it was like a crazy good deal. I Go back and watch a Saturday or check out my Twitter feed if you want to see the state this thing showed up in. Guitar center was mm-hmm. like, hey, we're going to get rid of this really cheap. I'm like, ooh, I don't know if I want to touch that. <laughs> it had lived a rough life and um, I got it, pulled it apart, reflowed all the solder, like six mm-hmm. hours of polishing to just get the um, shame off of it. And yeah, <laughs> all the padding. Yeah, I saw your pictures. <laughs> So then I, I wasn't going to buy one of these new because you buy one of these new like 500 bucks. So, and I, I like the re 27 It's a little brighter, but it doesn't mm-hmm. have any proximity effect. Like even if I get way up onto this microphone like this, it doesn't really change the tonation. So you can't like oh. get that voice of God or something like that. And um, it's a variable D technology. Same thing in the re 20. It's got three roll off switches, decent microphone. I like it. It's not the bling version, which I'm very happy about because there was another one that I would refuse to buy. And I was kind of scared because this thing was covered with so much grime. I'm like, I didn't know what I was going to get because <laughs> they, they make a chrome version of this. And I just couldn't live with that. Mm. Too bright. Yeah, that, then yeah, I noticed that would you, you're sounding all softer. Of the <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you definitely sound softer. I, I like I like your voice on this mic. I'll have to change your feed <laughs> because I went ahead and mic match this to the, um, <laughs> yeah, the Golden Age D2. It's like one of the important mm. things I try to stress to people about using EQ, mic, mic matching. I can make an AT2020 sound just the same as this. It's, yeah. This is not yeah. something that's difficult to do. But what's well, new with you, Jill? Yeah. Well, one of the reasons you might be so- sounding a little bit, just a tad bit different, is I am now using Jacko Audio with the Sonobus here for LWW. So that's that's been fun. You guys are really sound crisp as muffled and sharp. As Jitsi, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess that's what that's what I'm noticing, Ven, <laughs> is you just you, you both of you sound so much cleaner. We finally got Jill set up on Sonobus. And if you're wondering why, why we would go through that, um, that's something that we've been using. <laughs> For the experience, because we went through that with Pedro and Jordan. I just kind of rolled it out to everybody eventually after we got everything yeah. stabilized, because there's a lot of configuration and setup. If you're mm-hmm. doing podcasts and you're dealing with audio, a hack a lot of people like to do, which is completely understandable, is they'll do like local recordings. 
Like I would be recording myself. Jill would be recording herself and Pedro would be mm-hmm. recording himself. And they would send that. And then I try to stitch all that together. This allows us to send just uncompressed PCM 16 bit audio straight here. I get it recorded. I don't have to deal with like stitching and getting all that stuff back together. And it sounds way better than mm-hmm. anything you're going to find on like WebRTC, be it Jitsi, Zoom, or anything like that. Because, yeah, I bit rate uncompressed. Far, audio. far less yeah. compression. Uh, yeah. yeah well, uh, zero. <laughs> Zero. (laughs) (laughs) Infinitely less compression than. (laughs) But nothing new with Pedro. Just. uh, I mean, unless you want to talk about the pile of T43 slash T42 behind me there. No, I want to talk (laughs) because I have a Pedro Mateus. I want to talk about our new club. That we're going to open. Ah, the cool kids. No, the the lock cowboy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh yes i suppose there's the box um lock cowboy yeah <laughs> see if oh. i can get the logo to show there we go <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it is i i made the mistake of um the start uh, started watching uh lock picking lawyer and um then i went on amazon looked up like lock picking learning kits and they send you some. I still haven't been able to pick uh, one of the sides of this. One of the sides I have su- successfully picked. The other one, not yet. They have different keys. This one was fairly easy. I actually got through this one <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> and uh, there's a basic tumbler lock for the doors. This one was also mm. fairly easy to do things. But yeah, no, it's a lock picking set that uh, you can get for cheap on Amazon that that's what I do when I, while I'm in meetings now. It's like just tick, 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 tick. Oh, hello. That's pretty decent. That works. So you're, you're basically getting down with like just your drags and getting it up. And have you uh, played around with like doing a bump lock? No, no bumps. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, these are the only ones that I got and none of them are susceptible to bumping. Uh, one of them is susceptible to raking the padlock, yeah. which is the, the first one that I open. Okay. That one is just with the wave rake, you just go <laughs> done. <laughs> Those are the best kinds, though. That's the first thing you try. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, just oh, done. Done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Allegedly. So let's get into uh, your favorite topic, which is KDE, because that that is the best desktop manager ever built, and it's superior to everything. It's according to Pedro. I'm just reading what he put in the notes. <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the, I'm pretty sure I said none of those things. Uh, the um, new version, 522, is out now, and uh, they have a list of the like the big um, announcements with this one. So I'll go down the list of the ones that I decided to actually put to the test, because, yeah, I upgraded to 522 yesterday, shortly before the stream, mm-hmm. and I decided to start poking around with it because I like to live life on the edge. <laughs> Uh, K Win, uh, now supposedly, s- conky. Oh, he's he it, is, little... it looks very any moon. Uh, yeah, it's ex- exactly what I was going to use. <laughs> very kawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, K Win support, uh, supposedly now, uh, works with, uh, if you have different variable refresh rate monitors, uh, in Wayland. Oops. So, there we go. That's not the shot, <laughs> really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the um. Um, this was something that they promised for a long, long time, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I still have to actually, you know, log out and log into the Wayland session to try it, but yeah. And that technically works in X, but it has some issues and the NVIDIA drivers don't like it all that much. Uh, they introduced a new plasma system monitor, which, uh, replaces the KSYS guard and, uh, well, you guessed it. When you close the new plasma system monitor, it crashes. I'm not joking. Uh, the active screen now mm. defaults to follow where your cursor is, which is how I like it. So thank you, Plasma. That is very much appreciated. I always had to change that uh, as one of the first things I did. So that's good. K Runner can now be, uh, be called by using Alt Space, or it would if the launch shortcuts for it worked at all. I'm not kidding. They actually broke Alt F2 uh, with the first release, but they fixed it with the hotfix patches that they released today. They they actually fixed that. So good. 
<laughs> the transparency and blurring effect that you were seeing with that particularly slanted window that they have in the uh, announcement. <laughs> um, I don't know because transparency and blurring effects in KDE have always been resource hogs, so I always disable them. You, you want to <laughs> see like gaming performance improvement in KDE, disable the blur fish or blue fish or whatever they blur call fish. it, the blurring effect. Yeah. Just disable that. You'll get about <laughs> five to 10 FPS depending on the game. Okay. It's noticeable. And uh, the system settings, they have been changing the system settings for a while now, ever since they, uh, I think it was 518, 519 around there that they started changing that. And to that, I will say that, um, well, I will reiterate what Ross Scott of um, Accursed Farms and Freeman's Mind fame said. If I need to use search to use it effectively, then your graphical user interface is fundamentally flawed. Because if I'm having Mm. to type to use your graphical interface, (laughs) you've done something wrong. (laughs) Listen, there is a perfect, there's a simple solution to this, Katie. Remove the search bots. <laughs> but then people can't find anything because it's a confusing mess now. <laughs> it's, conf- it's a Linux configuration menu. This would just use the terminal, Pedro. Jeez. <laughs> What's Aww. the point of having a GUI at all then? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, at this point, I find myself asking, okay. Has anyone forked KDE 412 yet? Because I'd use that very quickly. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is one of the issues of getting old and set in your ways. I know the feels. <laughs> like, no, I liked it better when it was simple and thing. But the kids these days, they like search boxes. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Everything has a search box, which. Again, if your graphical user fa- uh, user interface was um understandable and intuitive and you know you could use it in a graphical way which you know graphical understandable and intuitive also translate to gui but whatever um you um you wouldn't need a search box you wouldn't need to type things to find the things that you're looking for well okay well you know the easy way to do that's just remove all the <laughs> options from the end user pedro <laughs> and then Aww. we have Noom. <laughs> you'll never, you'll never, you just can't, there's nothing with Pedro at all. This is like, if you make something for one group or if you make somebody coming into it, like that, that's always going to be trying to find that really delicate balance to make both parties equally angry. <laughs> Everyone hated that. Yes. <laughs> Aww. Well, Pedro, are you at least happy with the refactoring they're doing on the back end to make Plasma more hope, stable? And have you noticed? <laughs> I hope there will be a lot less crashing going forward because, well, yeah, if the system monitor crashes when I close it, that doesn't yeah, inspire a lot of confidence. Not good. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do if my desktop manager crashed. I, it's not the desktop manager that yeah. crashes. The only thing, the, the biggest problem with KD, especially on NVIDIA drivers, uh, has been Kwin and the compositor. Uh-huh. Compositing just dies. <laughs> you use forced composition pipelines, don't you? Yes. Why do you have a compositor running? Um, There's for not a... The, the, yeah, because uh, I always <laughs> had one running. Disable it. It works just fine. Yeah, probably. It does. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Although Katie did have a bug for a while that if you disabled the internal compositing, the panel would stop updating, which means that all of the elements in the panel would be frozen. So all Ooh. the windows you closed would still be showing. Don't use that panel. <laughs> yeah. That, that, <laughs> Katie problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good to see progress. Speaking of progress, Blinters has got uh, nodes. Nodes everywhere. Yeah. Nodes as far as the eye can see. And thank you to M. Fox Dog for this uh, story and letting us know. So, yeah, uh, Blender 2.93 Long Term Support Edition has been released. And yeah, as Ven was saying, there's nodes, nodes, nodes. In fact, there's 22 new nodes for greater control of geometry and effects. So, that's actually honestly really, really major. There are a lot of major updates to this release. 
And one was is with a grease pencil. And now you can automatically generate green, grease pencil lines around your 3D objects. That's huge. That That's a feature that a lot of artists have been waiting for to combine the 2D and 3D uh, vectors together. And what's really cool also is you can export grease pencil objects as vectors to use in Inkscape and other applications and vice versa. And also uh, PDF exports support animation and it, it creates one page per keyframe in the PDF. And this is actually really, really great for storyboards and animatics. I've used uh, this feature before in other animation packages. So thank you, Blender, for including that. And you can also create temporary closing strokes on the fly, as Ven was showing on the screen, so you don't accidentally fill out of your intended area. This just makes life a lot easier because you always, always miss connecting the vertices. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> definitely a thing in, in, in a 3D animation. And there's just been so many updates, including the EV viewport renderer looks looks uh, better than ever. Uh, it renders volume metrics now faster, more stable, and supports soft shadows and area lights. And the cycles renderer now supports multi-threaded export. Yay, we all cheer for that one for faster <laughs> renders. And what's really cool in this version is Intel Iris and XE GPUs now have OpenCL support. So now you'll get the uh, hardware uh, acceleration that in in your with your it, Intel and XE GPUs. That's pretty neat. I always like seeing the new stuff for the Blender, but I think you glossed <laughs> over possibly the most important important feature. Uh oh, <laughs> what did Ven find? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about rainbow donuts, Jill. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to just bring up a screen capture of the space metal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's more nodes. Yes, rainbow vomit nodes. <laughs> that's pretty decent. They get a bunch of stuff in here. When are they going to? Because um, I know there were um, talks with the roadmap, and like, hey, we're we're just gonna have to get rid of OpenCL. Yeah, yeah. I haven't heard what release that's going to be. Uh, Foxy probably knows <laughs> in chat. Because I went from completely like, ha, don't care. I'm over here on Team Green. And we know me and my dying love for Souls Corporations. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> leveraging CUDA. And I wasn't worried about OpenCL yeah. because um, the AMD solution for me with streaming and stuff like that, I want some de dedicated silicon, be it in VN code or maybe Player 2 will come into the game and don't hit me with Vappy. That's bad. Bad as quick sync. But Intel mm -hmm. came out and said, hey, we're working on that with our new Z GPUs are discrete. And so that's also going to be leveraging CUDA. So I'm like, hey, hey, this CUDA thing's important now because I might want to get off Team Green and go over to yeah. Team Blue and really upset people with my AMD Threadripper powered by Intel GPU. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> Soon. Soon. Well, 2024, maybe. I don't know. I'm a little more optimistic about that. But um, new version, it finally came out of beta, didn't it? Um, the yeah. Cosmic best. The is, yeah. yeah. The poops. Yes. <laughs> no? So now you can test System 76's new Cosmic Desktop, which is based on GNOME 3.38 Desktop. And you can test this out in their Pop OS 21.04 beta live ISO on their GitHub page. And there's been so many, you know, so many awesome enhancements uh, that come with Cosmic. And, uh, you know, I, uh, for instance, I love the always visible dock that you can fully customize, resize and move. The show workspaces and show applications shortcut buttons on the dock definitely make Cosmic feel more like classic gnome, and I think it's easier to move around. And hitting the meta key goes to a launcher that lets you search for an application instead of the gnome applications, which is the default for gnome. So that that is a really, really nice improvement. And now this is a big, big deal. We've been waiting for this for years. Now you can create folders on the desktop. For organizing your files. How long have we been waiting for this feature? <laughs> that wasn't so, a uh, thing you could do with um, 
<laughs> not by default in GNOME 3, yeah. no, because not GNOME 3 default. outright removed a load of functionality. And, uh, well, let's <laughs> that just say that there's, there's a reason that GNOME 2 went from being the de facto uh, Linux desktop environment, which had the biggest share, to yeah. uh, GNOME 3 <laughs> being uh, tied with KDE and XFC and all the others. Because of Linux desktop <laughs> fragmentation? <laughs> no. <laughs> because of really, really poor decisions on the part of the developers. I'm going to say this. But yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, I, I personally like lost my business uh, when XFCE added desktop icon support well over a decade ago. Like, yeah. What is this trash? Yes. Why do I need desktop icons? I've, I've yeah. come around to it. I if, kind of felt the same. Yeah. If you've seen my <laughs> desktop with its collection of like seven <laughs> icons yeah. on it. That's about it. That's, that's as far as I'm High go. contrast icon theme. Yeah, easier to see. <laughs> if they could wiggle, yeah, so, I could see them better, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the colors, though. Pretty. Uses less resources. Yes. <laughs> Black and white. <laughs> so, yeah. So, overall, I think, actually, System 76 really did nail it and uh, made improvements to the desktop including adding settings from Dash to Dock and GNOME tweaks and other extensions that we all wished would be default in GNOME. And now they have done it, done it with their remake of GNOME with Cosmic. Yes, <laughs> because even Ubuntu, for all their claims, we're using GNOME by default now. Uh, how many extensions are you using out of the box? Oh, four? Yeah. Isn't okay. the whole point of GNOME is to be able to use extensions? <laughs> Uh, the extensions are a third-party thing. <laughs> yeah, but isn't that yeah. part of the design of GNOME? Yeah. Uh, by default, you're not allowed to install in extensions. <laughs> you have to <laughs> enable the support for extensions, and then you can use them. Yeah. yeah, doesn't that make sense? If you plan on using something, you have to enable it? <laughs> I mean, if you want to start adding steps to be able to have a workable uh, desktop environment, yeah, sure. You can also try using Awesome or... I three. I just don't understand why you, why you dislike flexibility <laughs> yeah. so much. <laughs> you mean inflexibility by design? There's an extension to get rid of that. Oh, <laughs> then you need to be on Window Maker like me. <laughs> no, Jill, I get work done on my computer. So let's yeah. talk about Thunderbird. There is a new beta out. There's a couple of notes and all that fun stuff that you would normally expect. Uh, system requirements, nothing there, but couple of new things. Really, the only thing I noticed that was kind of big is they've joined the team like we did as well. They've moved everything over to Libra.chat for their IRC server. Um, Pedro, did they have anything else in here that was, that stuck out? Uh, the, oh. They enabled the Latvian language support. Yeah, so a big uh, <laughs> nice. to the <laughs> peeps in Latvia who've been wanting Thunderburb on their native language. That's cool. <laughs> matrix chat support how does that work i didn't know okay maybe that's probably one of the issues i'm like why is this taking so you have a matrix <laughs> chat support built into this thing thunderburb has chat uh it works yeah. with uh google hangouts and i don't know if it works with <laughs> discord i haven't tried but that's usually where my google hangouts come from is uh <laughs> thunderburb <laughs> you monster <laughs> aww <laughs> And, you know, they've added uh, new keyboard shortcuts as well, which is always wonderful. So there's now keyboard shortcuts to access the two CC and BCC fields of the Compose window, which are always nice. The more more keyboard shortcuts for the user interface, the better. <laughs> and uh, because and people still do IRC for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. So and because people do still print on dead trees. The printing UI has been updated. Yay! <laughs> you ever just mess around and accidentally like hit the print button in Chrome or Firefox? Like what? Yeah. I'm just oh, glad I like saving files PDFs. with the print. Yeah, I, I, I just, that, that's how I capture web pages often. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Firefox. Strange. I mean, Thunderbird's an interesting project. It, it has really turned into a lot more than I've ever wanted from it. That's why I quit using it. But I mean, it's there if you want it. I've, I've Popped over to evolution. Evolution thinks, hey, it's slimmed down. Like, that's weird times, but okay. That wasn't always the case. <laughs> so, Pedro, there's a new yes. AMD controller ah. on the block. 
That is, uh, and this one was developed by the uh, fine, fine folks behind Slimbook, the Spanish company, Yay. which uh, sent me exactly one of their laptops, and they will never send me another one again. Uh, the <laughs> what was uh, it running the, GNOME? Um, <laughs> no, it was actually running KDE. It was a the KDE Slimbook. Uh, the problem was it was a really, really bad laptop, but you could go look at that on LinuxGameCast.com if you'd like. This, this is actually a good idea. Um, this is the Slimbook AMD controller for their new laptops, which come with uh, Ryzen Mobile G uh, CPUs and GPUs as well. Uh, the, what it is, it is a GUI around uh, Ryzen 80J, which was created by Flygoat. So you can look it up on uh, GitHub. I was going to give them a little bit of static. You say you could have at least put a link to say that, yes, we're using Ryzen ADJ and we just make the GUI really, really simple. You have low, medium and high performance and away you go. It's got wheels but, with flames on it, man. You can argue. Yes. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's gamer. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it is. Uh, it does work uh, very, very well. I downloaded the source tarball and I had a look through because I wanted to know. It's like, what are you using to interface with the uh, the firmware exactly? And that's where I found Ryzen ADJ. And I was going to give them static for not at least including a link to say it's like, yeah, the Ryzen ADJ yeah, is the thing, thing that we're using. Yes, it, it's included. They ship that with the thing, but they don't say they don't include a link to the GitHub. That, that was my point. Oh. And I guess that has something to do with the fact that the Ryzen 8 HA project is no longer being actively developed by um, just skill. Uh, there's there's uh, the GUI project for um, Ryzen controller, uh, which is a different GUI for Ryzen 8 HA as well. Uh, <laughs> that is the one that has taken over the development. So I guess having competing GUIs there's the fragmentation. Uh, <laughs> that's why they didn't want to throw the link out. I, I don't know. I'm just guessing at this point. But it is a good idea. And I applaud it. We need more GUIs mm -hmm. for this stuff, for these kind of tools that people made to just access the low-level stuff on your laptop CPU. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you'd be able to <laughs> yeah. use that. And you need GUIs for the Windows users. So <laughs> I know yes. I can. I, I, am a, I am a desktop um, expert. I'm a power yeah. user. Oh, well, it definitely helps. Yes, to I do get, like to uh, click next. <laughs> get uh, people over to Linux and gaming on Linux because this this definitely uh, are the we need GUI GUIs for all these tools. So we <laughs> yeah, because not whether everyone we use wants them or to not. sit around to learn the syntax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> learn the syntax, children. Yes. So, <laughs> let's talk about Attack this. All the things. We're going to be talking about you know fragmentation with GUIs. How about a GUI that helps bring some of that together so you're not running There are now 15 apps. competing Aww. standards. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about open RGB because Pedro's going to find something Yay. he dislikes about this as well. He's on a roll so far. I got faith in uh, Now, this is the new hotness, not 0.6. And the big thing that they fixed in this, you know, but open RGB, it, it's going to handle a gang of your Blinkatron 9000 devices, video cards, motherboard backlights and stuff like that, all in one place under Linux. And there was a, there was a small issue where, you know, mm, the MSI Mystic Lights, they, they had to disable it because it kind of bricked them, uh, but they've solved this. So this mm. is better. Mm -hmm. And this is not just for Linux. My brothers and sisters out there, you're running Mac OS and you're running Windows and you're, you're sick and tired of having six different RGB apps open to control yeah. the three devices. <laughs> three of them are malware. And, right. <laughs> and the, yeah, bloated. <laughs> <laughs> This is what you want to get. There'll be links to everything in the show notes, but I mean, it's there. It's straightforward and I'm always happy to see it. I am. And, you know, by see it, I mean in spirit because I don't want any of this nonsense in my house whatsoever, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then doesn't like that rainbow vomit. I don't need to see <laughs> things blink. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty simple. You know, some people grow out of that. Um Yeah. Then again, so this is cool. You know, there's new plugins uh, for the UI. There's God. There's uh, lots of lots of uh, support for new hardware too, as well. Mm -hmm. But one of the features for the UI is there's a visual map editor now and effects engine, 
which is really awesome. And um, you can now exit to tray and save window geometry. Yay. So the basic <laughs> things are getting taken care of, <laughs> which is really it's awesome. It's a GUI but that actually, works. you know, yeah. has a graphical <laughs> interface. That, that's nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and as much static as I can give RGB, is something like this will at least allow you to cut it off. It mm-hmm. does. If it's a problem. That is it a big button there that you can just say off. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot quicker than clipping leads. I'm just saying. Aww. Well, I enjoyed making it, my. It does work. <laughs> yeah. I, me and Pedro were talking earlier. I was enjoying making my MSI Dragon on my GPU pretty colors. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to actually pull the side of my case open because it's a solid panel, not, you know, tempered glass. <laughs> and Good I man. opened open RGB, did the thing to change the effect to the like wavy one. Like, yeah, that 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 is in fact working. And put the side back on. You we're done. You didn't say it right, Pedro. You got to do what the kids do. So you did the uh, window delete mod to the side of your case. <laughs> oh yes, uh. <laughs> I deleted my windows. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a flat panel. Yeah. It's, it's a new mod. <laughs> So one thing we are always, well, we've always been in short supply and still are, um, audio plugins under Linux for your DAWs, like VSTs, you can still use them in OBS and stuff like that. But man, I try to get people to do that. And they're like, <laughs> so every time a company comes out, uh, what we're seeing right now is, you know, we're doing like compression, EQ, stuff like that, noise removal, like the stack of stuff I have going on over here. Apple is responsible for a lot of this right now because they released new architecture, the M1, and a lot of people are having to go back to their plugins and redo them, and they're going, hey, wait a minute, it's really easy to make a Linux VST3 now. So they're doing hey. it. <laughs> and Le Blue Lab audio plugins, hey man, we're preparing an update for all of our plugins, uh, features, and all that, compatibility and improvements, and Linux versions. Since we're here anyway, we're redoing it. Turns out VST3. Pretty easy to do under Linux, and uh, there's not a release date to find currently, but the work is very advanced, and they got a bunch of new stuff that you might not have played around with. I mean, this is commercial bundles, which, you know, they're complete bundles, like 250, but they have a free bundle as well. The things I'm definitely going to be interested in picking up and playing with is, um, what? well, the two that I'm interested they have an auto gain, mm-hmm. which is a gain writer plugin. I want to see how that works out. Because that's something we desperately need on Linux, and it could be handy for you know people getting started out that can't get their volume levels set correctly. And um, there's a denoising plugin. Where's that at? Yeah, the denoiser, right there. I'd like to take the Pepsi challenge with that guy against um, noise repellent, which is the open source neural net trained one that we're using right now in real time, even though you're not supposed to. But I made it work. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Not oh, really. So it's blue lab. To say. Yeah. Not really. I was just going to ask. Wasn't Blue Lab uh, also in one of the humble bundles that they included a bunch of uh, VSD plugins? There might have been. There's not much in the way of them. Like, I need to like just make a list. Like commercial plugins basically have overtone. You have mm. ACM traction. Strangely enough, makes their plugins essential. This is like a weird chicken egg problem that we have on Linux where all of mm. the DAWs, with the exception of Ableton, are available on Linux natively. They're just out there and um, a lot of the plugins aren't. And that's like something that people really struggle with because they you can get invested into plugins, especially if you're dealing with stuff like Waves using the iLock DRM. Another thing, this, these don't have the draconian DRM plugins as a service, which... Trying to get a lot of that to work under Linux can just be an absolute nightmare. It's not fun, but that, that, the more the better. And, you know, anytime I run across something that I think I'd want to use, I'm going to cut on my check. Mm-hmm. I'm going to buy some stuff, even if I'm not going to use all of it, because I want to show them, hey, this is interesting. And it might not be your thing, but it's going to help people like me and other people like me bring you more content directly from Linux. So there you go. PSA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Deal with it. Give them some money when they release it. <laughs> Not before end. No pre-purchase. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to help us pre-purchase some stuff, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Look at that smooth segue. 
that's how we do all this. Uh, we don't have a bunch of ads. We're not trying to sell you anything. We're like, hey, if you like it, kick us a buck a week. That'd be brilliant. More than that's even better. And we have a gang of people who do. Thank you. It makes Pedro squee with a delight. <laughs> Are you sure I'm the one that squeezes? Isn't, isn't no. that you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> squee. <laughs> <laughs> if you're able to help us out that's awesome we throw a bunch of extra stuff in you get some early access and we'd be working on some new videos um i've been in a holding pattern because i've been waiting on um a new interface because i tried to do interfacing linux at least once a month but i'm just straight up lighting money my own just pocket money out of that and whatever i can get hold to so that's gonna be fun i'm gonna be doing some obs stuff i'm gonna do some more audio stuff but i always give everyone a sneak peek you know at least you know, a couple of days early, mainly because I'm like, did I mess anything up? Because it's really hard. You know, mm-hmm. you're watching your thing all the way through. I'm like, oh, that's an obvious thing. And uh, we do a bonus show every uh, Saturday, pre pre super shows, and just kind of behind the scenes, what's going on. And um, yeah, a couple of things, show notes, gang stuff. Go read if you like anything. If you like supporting the stuff we do, that is the best way to do it. And uh, thank you so very much. Whatever. Very much appreciated. <laughs> if you want to watch us live, share the show. We got a YouTube channel. I yes, I know for a fact that because we were accidentally streaming to YouTube before we went live on Twitch. <laughs> 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 Hop in our Discord. We have IRC. All that of it, information is available on just the live tab at linuxgamecast.com. If you're a patron, you get access to Discord. If you're a Twitch sub, you get access to our Discord. We got like two channels of Discord. We got for the live show. All that's tied in with a bot. So everybody is able to talk to each other during the live shows. And that's kind of brilliant. Um, yeah, there you go. There's your not commercial. Ah, quit shilling. Too bad. No. Um, <laughs> we're shilling for ourselves, though. Does that really qualify? Man, mm-hmm. listen. Yeah, penguin love. I I want you to do an hour long show and not mention anything about how you just can't do it for absolutely free. Also, I'm blocking ads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I say use ad blockers. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, turns out it's kind of expensive having 600 gigs of data online 24 mm-hmm. seven. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Slice of pie. Three Ooh, slice of pumpkin one, pie. Um, is that pumpkin pie? I don't know. I, yeah, see, I think like I it. would want to like trick nom, nom. somebody with that. <laughs> it is a fruity pie. Yes. Oh, yeah. it, it could be like meatloaf pie disguised with a layer of pumpkin. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> really, really fine <laughs> ground meat. Mm. I wouldn't be opposed to that either. <laughs> hey, more audio stuff, right? Oh, no. Yep. Uh, I'm going to bring this up. Stomp pie. Because I like an eat project and anytime you're going to be bringing in neural networks for real time audio processing and a raspberry Pi with a guitar panel. Hey, I'm down with it because I think what's the best use of running neural nets in real time stomp boxes. That's right. 100%. This is using the Elk mm-hmm. Audio OS, NeuroPie and a Hi-Fi Berry DAC. And those are neat little devices all by themselves. And the dude has effectively built a real-time VST3 plugin that he's currently modeled like the Ibanez TS9, Tube Screamer pedal, and like a Fender's Blues Junior amp. Decent enough. Mm-hmm. And it's a fun little project. And you can stick this together for about 166 bucks. And in theory, you're able to train it, you know, you're just using PyTorch to simulate any other type of pedal or amp. And so it takes about 40 minutes, you know, to get that working. So I could see like a little bit of an ecosystem. Go watch the video. Give it a listen. I think it sounds all right for a Fender, but um, currently right now, a little bit of limitation. Could only do one model at a time, but he is planning on adding controls for gain, volume, EQ, and all that other fun stuff. And since this is running up high, I would really, really like to see a module for BitFocus Companion so I can control stuff like that from my stream deck because my immediate thought about this was making a stomp box. It's like, you're going to have to make a stomp box. You're going to have to get some type of on off switch to make that a viable solution for playing outside of just like playing around in your bedroom, like click. Cause that's not, that's not feasible to go click on something in the middle of a song when you need to kick on. You're yeah. Like, stop, stop. <laughs> click. Okay. Three, two, one. Yeah. Right. So I think that's pretty decent. And I like the idea of using machine learning 
to um, play around with audio effects. And look at it this way. You know, if you got kids, get them something like this. They can, they can learn stuff mm-hmm. and annoy you all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice if you have trailer. kids, get them a Raspberry Pi. Absolutely. And then uh, yeah. you will put them off computing for the rest of their life. <laughs> Or, or if your siblings have kids, every time you get in an argument, threaten to buy their children drum kits. <laughs> and uh, make sure there's soundproofing in your garage. <laughs> so when they're testing musical instruments, it doesn't annoy the neighbors. <laughs> All right. So maybe you want to tell us about your musical um, adventures and garages. Pedro, how did you do that? By like opening up the door and screaming outside? <laughs> Absolutely. Just... Flick open the door, crack up the amp, and just let it rip. Or, and stay with me here, uh, you take your phone out of your pocket, you go to linuxgamecast.com, and you you fill in the form. It's, uh, yeah, just click the contact button, and there's a form there. Just pick uh, LWDWSD topic that you'd like Mm -hmm. to send your feedback to. Otherwise, we may be inclined to misconstrue it as some hate mail and respond appropriately on Saturdays. But yeah, LWDW is the show that you want to send your uh, feedback, your p- Raspberry Pi projects, uh, anything. Just, you know, be careful with the URLs, as in don't. No. Nope. Just don't. I should probably <laughs> put like a notification right above that box that says, hey, if you're going to do that, send it to this email address. It's, it's almost as if you have already. No, no, clearly I didn't. Ooh. I clearly didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by how many people not. the um no. <laughs> the spam golem kicks in the butt I, every single week, <laughs> you clearly did not. <laughs> then you have the next level of. I didn't read that, and I'm going to DM somebody, or like I'm going to hit Ben up on Twitter, and I'm like, "Yo, I what, what, wow, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Aldius. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we love." We love the fact that you just get in touch with us. You can drop us a comment on Patreon, uh, YouTube as well. That's a thing. And um, yeah, if you have any questions or anything like that, or just want to share your project, or hey, maybe you want to pop on the show and come chill. We're like, all right, come chill. We'd love to have that. We do love talking about that stuff. All right. Mm-hmm. So I was talking about the Stream Deck. I'm like, man, this is a yeah. very cool thing. And uh, here's how you install it. And I, I made a little video, like five, seven minutes real quick, because I don't want to tell you about my, like, hey, you know, you ever go like look up a recipe? And you're like, hey, how do I make biscuits? And you're like, well, I was born on a small farm back. I'm like, ah, no, tell me how to make a biscuit. <laughs> well, yeah. Just like Ma used yeah, to Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I, I don't need the entire back. Like, just give me them digits. That's how I do YouTube videos, because I know people are busy. Um, and Narlin, Fraser. Yeah, we have heard. Yeah. And he made sure mm-hmm. that we get our uh, IRC channels over at uh, LibreChat. He wrote in because, <laughs> Pedro, I messed something up, didn't I? <laughs> uh, well, you did something less than ideally on the internet. And you made a video about it, too. <laughs> so, uh, Fraser was like, um, I prefer to install .deb packages with sudo apt uh, dot slash uh, package name dot deb mm. because this will also automatically on, on, install all required dependencies. Now, what did I do? Uh, use dpkg dash i. Yeah. No. Why would I do that, Pedro? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because you already have all the dependencies installed, or the package itself doesn't have any dependencies, as you were. <laughs> Yes, but he actually addresses that. The um, uh, If those exist in the package system, so if you don't already have them installed, uh, and if you use sudo dpkg-i, uh, then uh, if there are any dependencies required, you'll have to follow it up with sudo apt install-f for the package to run and the package manager to download all of the um, dependencies, otherwise you'll be left with APT in a non-functioning state mm-hmm. until you install all of those missing dependencies or uninstall the package you just installed. So yes, if you don't exactly know where that .deb came from, don't install it. That Just don't. <laughs> but if you absolutely must, use APT. Install dot slash package name dot .deb. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> in this particular case, using dpackage i, what we were trying to do is, and what we were doing was um, installing the OBS WebSockets plugin for OBS. Now, it mm-hmm. turns out all the dependencies that you need for OBS WebSockets happens to be OBS. Now, the and only way you that can, OBS depends on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no. OBS. <laughs> Oh, they just said it. The, okay. Just OBS. Yeah, it, 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 it okay. uh, if you have OBS installed, there's no way for it not to work, is what I'm telling you. Yes. Like, okay. now, the only thing that's going to catch you there is if you try to install an OBS plugin without having OBS installed. To which I reply <laughs> to Narlin. It's like, that person is beyond either of our help. There's, there's no, <laughs> there's, there's nothing we can do. Um, but no, I, I did write back at it. I was like, I was waiting. I was waiting. Because I, I knew when I typed, I was like, "We're we're gonna get somebody's gonna go." There it is. I didn't think it was gonna be you, man. But all right. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, to your point, that is the preferred way to do it. You know, especially if you're just downloading a dev and it's not in you know for you Ubuntu users like PPAs or anything like that. That is going to be able to do the um, you know dependency resolution. Like Discord's a good example. Yeah. You want to download the Discord dev. <laughs> you want to do the app install. Yeah, because then it's going to pick up the two or three things that uh, Discord's one, which is better than doing the dpackage. I running it in Discord going black. Like, all right, what is that? Yeah, yes, okay. the thing is actually there. Now you got to run sudo apt install dash f. Mm. Oh, look at all the dependencies <laughs> yeah. I didn't have. Okay. <laughs> Moral of the story uh, live a little, live dangerously. Ah, you could try and use aptitude and live dangerously. Aptitude is nothing. There is nothing. I hate when people say that because there's nothing dangerous about aptitude other than ignorance. Aptitude yeah. tells you it. Yes. So people will use it. People will make no, heavy use of ignorance while using aptitude and just yeah. break their entire system for the sake of installing one package. Fortunately, fortunately that level of ignorance doesn't even know aptitude as a thing. Yeah, this is true. For it, <laughs> and they will find it. <laughs> right, we got to bounce out of here. I'm going to roll some credits and we'll see you next week. Yeah. Aw, yes. yes. Bye. Aw, we love you all. <laughs> Gosh. We have new advisors, too. That is so cool. We do? Isn't it Artharon yeah. and um, Omegas? Well, it's still yeah. Omegas and Artharon, but their Omegas is still fairly new. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're a fairly new host of uh, yeah. LWDW. How yeah. would you, how would you say your experience has been to this point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, new kid. <laughs> new kid. I've been here more than three years now. <laughs> yeah, new kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that? This Five? is true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been doing Link Team Guest Weekly for 10 years. Pedro's a new kid. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's the baby. No. <laughs> and that was only half a year late to the party, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>